Good evening from wherever it is that you are watching us from. Welcome to the Voice of Jubilee. We are coming live to you from Jubilee Christian Church Parklands. This is Nairobi's Church of Excellence and it is indeed the House of Restoration. It is a chilly morning in Nairobi, but so beautiful, and we made it to the House of the Lord. So if you are within Nairobi and you're watching us right now, Get yourself out of the house. Welcome to the house of God. You'll find us waiting for you. You'll make it in time. Karibu sana. On behalf of Bishop Alan and Reverend Kadi Kuna, I want to say to you, karibu, karibu, karibu. Welcome to the house of restoration. This morning, as you have tuned in with an expectation, you have tuned in with your heart prepared to receive from the Lord. You have tuned in all prayed up. Let me tell you, your life cannot be the same again. We have been praying for you throughout the week that when you connect with us, there shall be bread. You will receive bread. You will receive healing. You will receive answers. You will receive clarity in the path of your life through the word of the Lord. You are in the right place at the right time. And this is your day. We enter his courts with thanksgiving in our hearts. We enter his courts with praise. We enter saying that indeed this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it this morning let your heart be open this morning receive from the Lord and you shall be fruitful 2024 is your year you will be fruitful in the name of Jesus there are numbers scrolling down on your screen if you want prayer if you want to you have questions that you want us to answer if you need counseling there is a team that is well prepared and well able waiting to minister to you if you give your life to Christ today and that's our prayer I pray that you will be moved by the Holy Spirit call the same numbers and they will minister minister to you in the name of Jesus. While at it, go to the comment section. Interact with us. Share this broadcast. When it's just good vibes, glory vibes, the word of God, when it's good stuff, then you can't take this alone. You have got to share with your neighbor. So like, subscribe, share, let everybody know that you're on. We are all about kingdom business and we are all about sharing the kingdom agenda to the rest of the world. You may be watching us today and perhaps you're on the verge of giving up. The current statistics on mental health and suicides and deaths that are related to mental health issues are on the rise. And I want to minister to your heart today. Well, the only thing that a retailer can tell you about a product is the demand and the supply. But when you go to the manufacturer, he understands the process of that product coming into being. He understands what it takes, the ingredients, the parts, the time. The manufacturer has the capacity and the technology to help him understand how long the product can be used. When you go to your manuals, you will see the length of, of a product. You can see how it should be used, when and where. All those details are in the manual. Did you also know that by the time a product gets into our factory, the value of that product has already been calculated in advance? 
what am I saying to you? It is not upon the world. It is not about. It's not upon social media. It's not upon the society to define your status. It is not even your circumstance to define your status, to inform your decisions. You cannot give up now. The Lord God is your maker. He had you in mind. Every many of the mental situations can be traced to fruitlessness in one area or another. The solution is for you to stay connected to the vine. It is on God. Get off that weight from your shoulders. It is not on you to figure it out. It is on the Lord Jesus, the maker. David cried unto the Lord in Psalm 16 and said, You will show me the path of life. He said that with, a well under, with an understanding that the manual for life is in the word of the Lord. He will show you the path. His word is a lamp unto our feet to brighten our path, to take out every form of darkness. Are you around people that are giving up, that are going through difficult situations? Remember that we are called to love. You cannot have Christ in you and not be a lover of his people. Let's love people into healing. Let's carry each other in love. In this season where there is so much going on around the world, people need love. Let's love each other. And when you're standing with them in the gap, the Lord will also get people to stand with you in the gap. Where there is Christ, then there is love. We will conquer when we stand together as an army of Christ in love. So let's love each other. We must bear fruit. And it begins with us being well. The Lord Jesus is in the business of healing broken hearts. You will live. You will not die. God is with you. You'd better trust and believe in the name of Jesus. And one way that I love, love putting my burden down is in praise. When you praise, when you worship, their portals are open. There are portals available for exchange. So this morning, why don't you exchange that heaviness, that sorrow in your praise and in your worship? I promise you when the heavens open on you, you can take anything from the Lord and today healing is your portion in the name of Jesus. See you on the other side. We now hand you over to the main service. Shout of victory, make it louder for Jesus. And we are victorious people. Let me hear you shout. Make it louder. Let your victory shout. Reach to the heavens. Reach to the sea. He's in the
you dead. Come on. One more time. Are you ready to give him a clap? Take it over, 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 over. We are going to take that clap from the lowest of low. Knowing that our shout is our victory. Are you ready? Come on. Lower. Lower, lower, lower. Now one. Are we ready? A two. A three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Come on, pray. One more time with your eyes. Take it down. Take it down, 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 down. When we get up, uh, we will let everything know we are victorious. Uh, I want you to give a shout of victory. Are you ready? One. A two. A one, two, three. Come on, give him a Hallelujah! I don't know if your neighbor is ready for this. We are going to do a crazy dancing in this house. Kaiwa kwanga iwa kwae. Kaiwa kwa. Let me see you jump for Jesus. Let 
me see every man in the house. I do the money, yo. I want to see every man. Oh, I need to marry you. I, 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 to me, I, 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 Hakuna mungu, hakuna mungu, hakuna mungu, hakuna mungu, hakuna mungu, 
You are worthy. 
the names fade away and till there's only you let all the other names fade away jesus take your place jesus take your place let all Declare today the cancel fades away. Until it's all you. Let every other name, let every other name. Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Let all the other names. Depression fades away. Jesus, take your place. Woo! Jesus, take your place. Hey! Jesus, take your place. Hey! Jesus, take your place. It's 
don't you lift up those hands in the presence of the Lord such glory such presence of God in this house this morning surely our lives will never be the same again our dear loving father in the name of Jesus we are so grateful for your kindness we are so grateful for your grace we are so grateful for your love that you have loved us with O oh God indeed there is nothing that is able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus we thank you father for you have been good you have been wonderful you have been gracious to us oh God you have kept us you have preserved us everlasting God and father we pray that even this nation shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God that father even as your word is declared from different platforms today that people shall receive your word people shall hear your word in the name of Jesus and everlasting God we pray even for our nation Kenya we remember almighty God even those that lost their loved ones this week oh God in the army we pray that you shall comfort them everlasting God and Lord we rise up against that spirit of accidents and incidents even on our roads in the mighty name of the Lord we silence that blood that spirit in the name of Jesus and we speak safety on our roads in the mighty name of the Lord in the name of Jesus we speak preservation over every highway in the name of the Lord may you watch over us and may you keep us oh God to the glory and honor of your name we lift up your name and we honor you and here in JCC we lift up our hands uh, above our heads to honor you to give you praise uh. oh come on JCC oh come on give him a give, give him a praise uh. give him a praise oh come on give Jesus a praise give him a shout Glory to God. Has the Lord been good to you? Has God been gracious in your life? Have you seen the goodness of God? I'm convinced that you can do a better job than that. Can we give him a praise? Give him a shout in the house of God. Come on, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Celebrate Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. He has been a good God. He has been an awesome God. He has kept us through the week. And again, he has caused us to gather in his house today. The Bible says, blessed is the man whom he causes to approach unto him. And today he has caused us to stand in his house again. And our life will never be the same again. And those who are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, our online family, we love you. Once again, we want you to know that we don't take it for granted that you took time to be with us again this morning. Why don't you invite somebody else? Tell them to connect. Today the word of God is coming. And I know truly without any shadow of doubt that your life will never be the same again. I'd like us with the joy of the Lord to put our hands together and appreciate those who are watching us on television. Come on, appreciate, appreciate them. Appreciate them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you appreciate your neighbor even as you have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Appreciate what they are wearing. Amen. It is time to give. Amen. I'm going to be reading from the book of uh, 1 Kings chapter 18 36 to 38. And as you find your way there, if you'd like to give uh, our pay bill facility, our pay bill number is 545-700, and the account name is JCC. And if you'd like to write out a check, kindly just write it in favor of Jubilee Christian Church. And for those who are in the house this morning, if you'd like to swipe, you can talk to the usher on your aisle, and they're going to assist you. Amen. First Kings chapter 18, 36 to 38, the Bible says, And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, 
Let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. Glory to God. And I want to share again uh, on the uh, understanding the principles of giving. Last Sunday we looked at love and today we are looking at faith. Amen. Today we are looking at faith. Now it's important for us as a church uh, to understand the financial uh, dominion plan or anchors, the financial God's financial dominion plan anchors on the covenant of seed time and harvest. Seed time and harvest, which connotes uh, giving and receiving. Glory to God. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, because he that comes to God must believe that he is, not only that he is, but also that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek after him. Now, one of the things that clearly distinguished or set apart uh, the children of Israel back in those days uh, was in the fact that uh, they had a God who could respond. Uh, they had a God uh, who had an ability to respond to him and so to respond to them. Uh, and so even when it came to their giving, even when it came to presenting their worship, uh, when they approached God uh, because they had this understanding at the back of their mind uh, that their God is able to respond, uh, they came with an expectation. Uh, they came with an expectant heart. Uh, they did not just do things, uh, worship, praise God, offer sacrifice, uh, as a religious obligation, uh, but they understood uh, that if we put, we, 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 we call on our God, uh, he's going to be able to respond to us. Uh, and this gave them the audacity and the faith that they needed uh, even to approach difficult battles. Uh, even when they were outnumbered, uh, they still would go out and fight uh, because they knew that their God was well able to lead them into victory and to lead them in triumph. Uh, and even in our time and today, uh, I want to let you know that as you give your offering, uh, as you praise the Lord, uh, as you glorify him, uh, you need to know that you are dealing with a God uh, who is alive. Uh, our God is not like Baal, uh, who they cut themselves, uh, calling on him and he did not respond. Uh, our God uh, is a God who responds to his children. Uh, he wants to respond to you and your expectation. Uh, when you come with an expectant heart, uh, it does not pollute your worship. Uh, it glorifies God uh, that you have come with an expectation uh, that God is going to respond to me. And so the Bible says uh, in the portion of scripture where we read uh, that this whole battle was a battle to acknowledge uh, that God is the living God. Uh, and that same God uh, that caused fire to come from heaven uh, and landed on that altar, the fire that drinks water. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, fire that takes water. Praise the name of the Lord. That God that responded by fire is the same, same God uh, that we are serving even today and he's able to respond positively to your situation. Uh, we didn't come to the house of God to waste time. Uh, as you have praised him, he has seen. Uh, as you're giving your offering, he has seen. Uh, as you're worshiping him, he has seen. And I declare under the grace of the servant of God, may God respond to your situation even as you need him in the name of Jesus. Uh, whatever difficulty, whatever situation you need him to intervene, uh, may he intervene in Jesus' mighty name. Why? Because he's a God who responds to those who seek him diligently. So we don't just believe that he is all powerful. That he's this glorious glow, God of glory who has all this power. We also believe with his power he wants to use it on our behalf. And may he use it in your behalf in Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear an amen? If you came with your gifts uh, to the house of the Lord, you came with your tithe, you came with that which you came to worship the Lord with, your, uh, your, your offerings, your tithes, and uh, 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 if you're giving towards the missions, kindly just indicate there. And if you're giving towards the hands of compassion, also just indicate, tick on the envelope. And those who are watching us again on Facebook and YouTube, if you, uh, we invite you also to give. Our pay bill number is 545-700, and the account name is JCC. Glory to God. If you're giving uh, with your phone, kindly just lift it up in the presence of the Lord. And the rest of us, if you have an 
envelope just present it before the Lord in Jesus mighty name our father and God in the name of Jesus we are so grateful we are so honored to be giving in your house again we thank you father because you are a living God you are not like Baal who they called upon and did not respond you are a God who, who, who has invited us oh God to come with an expectation in our hearts and as your children present their gift as they present their tithe in honor to your word as they present their offerings almighty God we pray that you shall visit them oh God with that personalized miracle with that personalized intervention that they may need in their lives oh God because you're not a God who is not touched by the feelings of our infirmities oh God may you minister to your people in Jesus mighty name and somebody said amen we send the ashes to you in the spirit of excellence to wait upon us glory to God as we kindly receive the following announcements amen uh, once again the children's church department are requesting all the parents uh, to make sure that you order pre-order the workbook amen uh, at the information desk the workbook for your children to be using in the uh, in the children's services amen also uh, if you're still here and you've not yet joined a department uh, departments have been experiencing amazing growth amen so many people have joined departments and so if you're there don't be left out amen make sure that you serve God in the house. We have uh, 23 departments in this house. So kindly after the service, just you'll meet with the representatives uh, right there at the notice board. There are tables there, and they are going to tell you more of the team that you may desire to join. Now, the missions department uh, will be having soul winning uh, on Fridays and Sundays. Today, they are going to the city to win souls. Please, uh, for more information, you see Pastor Zipora at the Get Understanding Bookshop. Hallelujah. Our dad and mom's books are available at our Get Understanding Bookshop, Intimacy with God. Uh, they are on sale. Think on these things, living in financial distinction, all of them. If you need a copy of any of those books, even those who are watching us, we can easily just get it to you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, if you'd like counseling and prayer uh, for yourselves or loved ones, dedication or business or property, you can visit the office any day on Tuesday to Friday from 9 a.m. all the way to 5 p.m. And once again, uh, we still uh, request you for clothes, men's clothes and shoes for the Heroes for Christ Men's Empowerment Forum that we have. We have a new cohort now of about another 120 men that we are mentoring and working with. So we need clothes, we need shoes, and for more, uh, for, you can do that. Hand them over to the Hands of Compassion desk outside there, and that will be a great blessing. Are you glad to be in the house of Jesus? Your yes is very wanting. Glory be to you. Is it that it is cold? Hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. With the joy of the Lord, put your hands together as we welcome our mom. Hallelujah. You can rise up on your feet. Amen. Wow. Glory to God in the highest. Would you ask uh, three people around you, can your mama even? Uh, can, can your mama even? Okay, just, 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 just ask them, can, can your mama even, you know? Yeah, just ask them, hey, 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 can, can your mama even? Just, just walk around and just ask them, can, can your mama even? <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Oh my goodness. Before we get onto the word of God, leave the comfort of your seat. Go say hello to 15 people. 15. The number is 15. 15. Let, watch and you messy mama. Watch and Watch and you messy mama. Pastor Moneki, come and, and make sure that it is 15 people. Come and make sure that it is 15 people. Don't just stay in Jerusalem. Move around. Move around. Glory to God. Amen. Say hello to somebody. Don't just stand by yourself. Up there in the balcony, I'm watching you. The lady in yellow, you're standing by yourself. Glory to God. Move around and say hello to somebody. Spread some love in the house of God. Can you just introduce yourself as well? Amen. Give them a compliment. Let them know they are looking amazing. Let them know they are looking good. Hallelujah. Amen. You are at number seven. Please go to the rest eight. Finish with the eight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Number nine. Glory to God. Keep moving around. Amen. Move away. Move away. Glory to God. Can somebody say hello to Babu? Amen. Go and give Babu a big hug. And tell him, welcome to the house of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Say hello to an usher around you. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, go to the next five. The next five. Who are at the back? You've not finished. 
Glory to God. Say hello. Congratulate the catering. They are graduating today. Amen. Spread some love up there in the balcony. Please move around. Say hello to somebody. Compliment them. Let them know they are looking beautiful. They are looking amazing. Hallelujah. Appreciate what they are wearing. Congratulate them for beating the rain and making it to the house of God. They were not afraid of the clouds. Glory be to God. Oh yeah, you better tell them they are weather beaters. You, you are a weather beater. Tell, weather can never touch you. Tell them, ah, you are a weather beater. Whatever weather you get, you will beat it. And show up in Zion. Aha, uh -huh, walk around and just, three more. I've seen 12. <laughs> and as you're saying, hello, are you telling them they are looking nice or you're just saying, hey, and then you're going to think, oh my gosh, she looked so nice. Tell them they look amazing. Tell them it's wonderful to see them. Tell them God is on their side. They can never lose. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. What a mighty God we serve. Amen. Glory to God. Aha. Uh -huh. Listen. I want you to know that you are loved by God. And this God that loves you, at the count of three, I want the neighbors to wonder, hey, what did they see? What happened? At the count of three, forget anyone that came. If you came for your way, I want you to raise up a dangerous shout that says, God, we love and adore you. One, are you ready? Don't even be intimidated by your neighbor, even if they are handsome as what? Even if they are pretty like, huh? like a doll. I want you to forget them too. Are you ready? We are going to shout here with music. You play that music like you warriors. And we're going to shout for three minutes of shout. Three, let's go. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh, you better shout with a revelation. You better shout with a revelation. You better shout for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You better shout for Jesus. Hallelujah. You better shout for the one that woke you up today. Hallelujah. You better shout for the one that reigns in your life. Yeah. You better shout for the majestic King of Glory. You better shout for the Lion of Judah. You better shout for the Rose of Sharon. You better shout for El Shaddai. You better shout for El Elyon. You better shout for Adonai. You better shout like you know. He is the one that woke you up today. You better shout like he's your number one. You better shout like there's nobody but Jesus. You better shout. Woo. Tell your neighbor why it not for Jesus. I would not be looking the way I look right now. Neither would I be feeling the way I feel right now. It is because of Jesus. Tell them, don't get it twisted. It's not that I've not had devils to fight. But because of Jesus, I am a winner by nature. Tell them, don't get it twisted. By the makeup, by the good suit, by the tie and the beard. Don't get it twisted. I know whom I have believed. He is a mighty warrior that's great in battle. He is a mighty warrior. Give him a shout one more time. Oh yes, 
to God in the highest glory. Woo. We acknowledge our bishop, amazing mighty man of valor, that is about to step back on this altar, preach the gospel to Je gospel of Jesus in such a profound and mighty way. My God, let me tell you, he's getting stronger by the day. He's getting stronger by the day. He's going to come back here and do what he has been assigned to do. Let me tell you, that man carries, he's carrying a dangerous anointing that I tell you God is going to use him in these last days in such a mighty, powerful way. And so Bishop is about to come back right here on this altar and minister powerfully with that anointing that comes from on high. Somebody say hallelujah. And so we love you, honey. We love you so much. You are amazing. Thank you for raising us, for believing in us, for trusting us. You are amazing. You know, this altar has been raised. I told you last Sunday, it's been raised by tears and prayer. This altar is not a joke. That is why, how many of you have watched our YouTube uh, um, uh, 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 spontaneous worship? How many of you? How awesome is that? Wait until you watch the one we are uploading today. We couldn't even sing. We were weeping. It was something else. God's presence just bombarded us in this place. It's awesome. So even today, we're going to upload another one that is absolutely powerful. And you can uh, uh, put it on and pray as you pray, as you uh, seek God, as you just put it on and just hear God. It's a powerful powerful ministration and I believe that God is going to bless you. Now, the reason why it's that powerful and where, where I was going with this is because of this altar. This altar is not a joke. Anybody that stands on this altar can tell you. When we tell our sons they are preaching, they don't sleep, they don't eat. They go fasting instantly to go and fast and wait on God because this altar is not a joke. Why? Because the person behind this altar, our bishop himself, has raised this altar with serious prayer. He is a prayer warrior. Your bishop can pray for 24 hours without even stopping. He is a mighty warrior in prayer. And if there is anything that you can get from your bishop is prayer. You must have a spirit of prayer where you pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody that prays and somebody who plays are two different people. Because let me tell you, when you find people that pray, know that there is something that God does through that vessel. Amen. And so this is a house of prayer. That is why it's a house of restoration. And so when we sing and do worship here, the reason why there is such a presence is because we don't joke with it. These guys meet. These guys meet on Tuesday, on Thursday, on Friday. They are meeting. And what are they meeting to do? To pray and wait on God for what song to sing. They don't just rise up and say, hey, naski, hey, naski. No. Who, with whose, who, as whose children? They cannot do that. You can't play games on this altar. Are we together? And so for the man that God raised for this altar, I want us to put our hands together and tell him, Bishop, we love you. <laughs> tell him, Bishop, we love you. Amen. We love you. Thank you for raising us well in the Lord. Somebody say amen. Whew. Before I get onto the word of God while you're still standing, tell your neighbor me I don't get tired of standing. <laughs> Bishop's third book on uh, 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 Think on These Things, Volume 3. Not the third book, the Volume 3 of Think on These Things is out. And he's going to be launching it here, not this coming Sunday, the other one, the fifth. So on the fifth, he's going to be launching it. I want all of you to make sure you get a copy. Make sure that he does not go back with any copy. Let us get them all. He goes and reprints. Are we together? Uh -huh. He wrote this while going through the hardest time of his life. And so I want you to know that it's an anointed book. Get a hold of it and God is going to bless you. Bishop and I, I know we are cute and handsome. But we have a story. We have a serious story. And the story behind us is appointment with destiny. Get a hold of it. And you will be blessed completely. While he was dropping in, in, in Kariobangi, I was dropping at Cannibal. So we were both doing the same thing, just in different directions. And then while he was drinking Mokarakinga, me, I was drinking the more expensive one. <laughs> but we were still getting drunk. Are we together? But God, now we get drunk by the Holy Ghost. 
but God. And there's something about this name. Get a hold of this book. It's going to bless you. I've also written the latest one, Intimacy with God. Please get a hold of it. It's going to bless you. Now, very quickly, for those people who want to uh, uh, join and serve in the Mta'ani outreach, they have already won over 300 souls in Thursday and Friday. This, this week, just this week, this month alone. Uh -huh. They have won over 200, 300 people. 225, 225 in this month alone. They have won souls. Pastor Zippy is looking for people who will stand with her from the church that can go with her to win souls. Please come and stand by her. She's going to be outside at the bookshop after the service. Please go and join her and I believe God is going to bless you. We'll announce the DOC convention after I preach the gospel and then Okay, we need executive cars. We need executive cars. We already have quite a number. We have um, Prados. We have uh, Range Rovers. We are now looking for Lamborghinis. And we are also looking for... <laughs> We are looking for Rolls Royce. Uh -huh. We are looking. So if you have a Rolls Royce somewhere and you're saying, yes, Lord, come and see Jadiel after the service. Jadiel is going to be here. Please see him after the service. We want nice cars so that when they are carrying and ferrying our men and women of God, they know Kenya is not a joke. We didn't come to play. Somebody say amen. Glory. Are you ready for the word? Woo! Let me tell you. If you don't get anything today, you are never to get. God woke me up in the midnight hour the other day, a few days ago, and gave me such a profound word. And I know that nobody will remain the same. I know it. Nobody will remain the same unless they choose to. So, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 40. We're going to read verse 28 to verse 31. And then I work the word. Amen. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28 to verse 31 on the New King James Version. I want us to read it together. Just clear your throat. Mm, 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 mm. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? So please, you have thousands of you in this place. I want you to read like you are. Two, three, go. Have you not known? Yes. Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Father, Master, use me today. Let somebody hear your voice. Let somebody's life be delivered, oh God. I pray that you move in this house like never before. Heal, deliver, set captives free. Do a mighty work, King of glory. Holy Spirit, promise of the Father. Do what only you can and glorify yourself. If there be anything to glorify, oh God, and to glory in, we shall give it all back to you for you deserve the glory in Jesus mighty name and somebody say amen the title of my message before you sit down because I want you to tell it to your neighbor is fruitfulness stroke but those who wait but those who wait but those who wait so tell your neighbor what it is and then you take your seats and sit on your enemies forever but those who wait Take your seats and let me work the word of God. I totally believe that the Lord is going to bless you today. Now, I'm starting this uh, uh, preaching from the end and I'm coming to the beginning. And so we started with uh, verse 28, but I will not start there. I will end there. So we're going to start with the last verse and then we're going to go climbing up, up to where... We, ha uh, uh, we have started. So we are going from the end to the beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ and somebody say amen. 
So the first thing I'm going to look at is but those who wait on the Lord. But those who wait on the Lord. Now though there are those in the best possible condition in this life that will faint and be weary and utterly fall. There is a special group that God is addressing today. Those young ones will faint. They will lose hope. They will go through hell. They will lose heart. But God is addressing a particular people that I want us to look at today. And how you can also be a part of these special people. So after all the talk and saying that they will faint and they will do all that. He says, but those who wait. And so it is a hopeful kind of waiting. That God is saying there is a but. And a but, like we've said all the time, a but starts a whole new sentence and, and discards what has been said be beforehand. And so, even though there's going to be fainting and giving up and throwing in the towel and getting weary, God says, but there are those that will not go that direction. Somebody say amen. So, we gain strength in understanding the word of God. And I'm going to start with, the, with, the, with the, the first one is that they that wait. They that wait. Now, the key to soaring and running and walking and not fainting is waiting. The key to waiting is knowing. And I'm going to come to the knowing later on. But the key to running and not fainting, the key to not giving up is waiting. Now, waiting for anything is never easy, especially in this 21st century where things are so fast. People want to meet today and marry tomorrow. People don't even want to read uh, about marriage and what it entails. People just want to meet today and tomorrow they have, they, they, they have fallen in love and they are married. They are marrying without even knowing what it, it, it entails. People want quick fixes. Everything. Everybody wants it very fast. You want it now, here and now. Nobody ever wants to wait, especially in this day and age. Everybody wants everything now. Now, waiting means trusting. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 3, verse 5 and verse 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Waiting on God speaks about trusting. Now waiting will build your expectation. When you're waiting, you will build expectation. Now when you look at a pregnant mother, a pregnant mother, she's called expectant. Why? Because she's expecting something out of what she's waiting on. She's not just pregnant, she's expectant because she's looking forward to something that is absolutely powerful. So while you're waiting, you must be expectant that what you're waiting for is something beautiful. Some are waiting for twins, others triplets. Some are waiting for manifestation of God's power upon their lives. While you're waiting, you don't wait in pity. You don't hold a pity party. You wait in expectancy that that something beautiful is coming out of your waiting. Can I hear a better amen in the house of God? That is why a mother will go and buy clothes. She will go and buy a, a, a coat, baby coat. She will start buying this and that for the baby because she's expecting something beautiful. I want to hear everybody that's waiting on God say amen. amen. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18, the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. And I stand to decree it shall not be cut off. Whatever you're waiting on, it shall come to pass in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. The other thing we should look at is that t waiting teaches us patience. Waiting teaches us patience. Patience is a valuable virtue that helps us to manage our stress. Let me tell you the stress levels. They have actually said that, they, 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 they have said that stress now is considered as a disease. Am I right, Pastor Carol, in psychology? They have already said that stress is considered as a disease now. Because people are getting so stressed out. They are stressed about work. They are stressed about finances. They are stressed about businesses. They are stressed about marriage. They are stressed about children. They are stressed about money. They are stressed about so many other things. But when you learn patience in waiting I want you to understand that it is a virtue and you need to really really honor that virtue so that you can be able to stop getting stressed. Stress has never blessed anybody in this life and I declare a stress free life in Jesus name. 
Does it mean that you'll go through nothing? Absolutely not. It means that you will go through something. But while you're going through it, stress will be at the door there looking at you and knowing it can never come near you. Somebody say amen. When, you're, when, you're, when you refuse stress, you are able to make better decisions in life. When you're stressed, you will make offline decisions. You will jump into conclusions. You will do things that are not worthy. You will run instead of waiting. So when you wait, you learn patience. Patience is what builds resilience in your life. You learn to be resilient in your life when you understand the power of waiting. Waiting helps you to uh, uh, reflect. It also helps you to introspect. And it also helps you to assess. You, 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 you can uh, reflect, introspect, and assess which leads to personal growth and personal insight. When you learn to wait, you learn to grow because you look within and see what's worth it and not what's not worth it. Waiting helps you to appreciate what you will eventually get. You will appreciate that husband because you waited. You will appreciate that wife because you waited. You will appreciate that ministry because you waited. You will appreciate it because you waited. Is waiting easy? Tell your neighbor, um, I bless you if it's easy for you. For some of us, it's hard. But for you, God bless you as easy as it can. Are we together? Waiting is never easy. But it is very, very critical that we learn to wait. Listen, easy come, easy go. If you receive anything easily, you let it go. They say that children of rich families who are just handed over wealth, they let it go because they have no idea the sweat the parents went through. Not mine. It's a lie. What? You're waiting for what? Hey, let me tell you. You're going to learn to work. And you're going to learn to wait. And you're going to learn to trust. You're going to learn faith. You're not working on my faith. You better build your own. Am I raising children here? Both spiritual and physical. Hey. At the I send you, 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 then it's me taking care of everything. It's a lie. You're going to go to school, you're going to learn, and you're going to start walking the journey because I want to leave something inside you more than I want to live outside. Because handing over stuff is not loving the children. You must be able to teach them what it means to build wealth. What does it mean? to work. What does it mean to wait? So let them not just have everything they want because they can't wait. Oh, I can't wait. What, when, whatever I need is just, no, 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 no. God is raising children that will mature in their waiting. Oh God, oh God. Listen to me. Is it come? Say it like a warrior. Is it come? When you wait for something, you value it. You put value on it. You know, I used to hear my spiritual mother say that, oh, you can touch anything else, but don't touch the anointing. The price I've paid for this anointing, uh -uh, don't even dare. I used to not understand what she's talking about. Now, hey, try me in that area. I will kill you until God you died. Are we, ah, the level of price, my God. The level of price is beyond what you can imagine. And I see some of you have paid that serious price. I declare you will gain whatever you've paid for. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your voice and say a better amen. amen. Waiting prepares you mentally. Waiting prepares you mentally. It also prepares you emotionally and practically as well. It gets you ready for the next step. If you learn to wait... You learn to receive the next thing. And when God brings it, you are very grateful. You are grateful to God. You don't play with what you've waited on. If you wait on something, the minute you receive it, you treasure it. And you take care of it. You safeguard it with your life. If God gives you an assignment, you don't play with it. You safeguard that assignment with your life. Because of the price you've paid for that assignment. So waiting is good. Somebody say, wait. Lift up your voice and say, I better wait. Waiting in God or in the Lord. The Bible says, they that wait. It is those that wait upon the Lord. Remember, it's not just waiting. It is upon the Lord. Number one, it gives you complete dependence on God. 
When you learn to wait on God, it gives you complete dependence on God, number one. And number two, it gives you a willingness to allow him to decide the terms. You give God the, you, you, you are willing to give God the power to determine the terms. It's no longer on your terms, it's on his terms. God, when you're good and ready, I am ready for you. God, when you want this, you don't command God and, and, and dictate to him and direct his path. No, he directs your path. Can I talk to somebody today? Waiting is declaring our confidence in his eventual action on our behalf. You're declaring that God, I have confidence in you. That those that wait upon the Lord. Who I, I declare my confidence in you. I am confident that it is well because you're on the throne. Can I talk to somebody today? Waiting is not killing time. That's a devil's terminology. Waiting is not killing time. No. Waiting is not wasting. Waiting is building up your expectation and faith in God. You see, you have no other help apart from God. And so you're building your faith, most holy faith in God. And you're acknowledging that it is only him who can get you out of, of any situation. Somebody say, wait. I want to hear a better, very loud voice say, wait. wait. Let me hear both soprano and tenor. I, I cannot hear the sopranos. Uh, yes, uh, again, the daughters of Zion that are coming this Saturday. Yes. The sons of Abraham that are here. Yes. Say it now together. Yes. Look at your neighbor, tell them. Yes. Those that wait. And I declare as you wait, you shall see the manifestation of whatever you are waiting on in the name that is above every other name. And the Bible says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall renew their strength. And you know, the Bible compares us to an eagle. And so I want us to just look at the eagle and how it renews the strength. So that we can understand how we can renew our own strength. Now, the eagle has the longest lifespan of its species. It lives for 70 years. 70. It has the longest lifespan of its species. But it gets to a certain age... And it has to make a very, very dangerous decision. And that's what I want us to look at because we are talking about renewing strength. When it gets to the age of 40, the claws are not lo no longer able to catch prey. The claws become weak and they are no longer able to catch prey. The feathers, the wings, and it has the biggest, the longest wings, which are admirable. When you see it so, it's so admirable and so cute and so beautiful and so massive. But the wings now begin to hold on to the chest because it's aging. And at the age of 40, it now begins to hold on so it cannot be able to sow like the eagle that it is. And so it has to really just sit back because nothing is going right in its life and then the beak the beak it's big it, it, it folds it folds and so it's not able to work and do what it is supposed and created to do and so the eagle now has two choices it has two very critical choices to make it will either choose to die or it will choose to sow it will choose to to, to renew its strength it will choose to die or to renew its strength. And so you have to understand that the choice it makes is never going to be an easy choice because it is either you die or you renew. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your voice and say a better amen. amen. So now it has a bent beak. It has feathers that are not working. And it has claws that cannot catch prey. And it is in a very bad situation. And the eagle decides, I want to live and not die. How many of you are deciding you're going to live and not die? Let me tell you what the eagle does. It goes to the highest mountain. It goes to the highest mountain. Remember, it's not looking for, it's not looking. See, the problem is sometimes we look for too many people to advise us. We look for too many people to go with. But there are decisions in life that happen that you cannot make decisions with people. 
You have to go alone. The eagle goes to the highest peak and it goes alone. And the business begins. The first thing that the eagle does is a very, very gruesome thing. Because it begins to hit its beak on a rock. It takes the beak and begins to hit it on a rock. Why is it hitting it on a rock? Because it wants the beak to come out so that another one can come up. I want to let somebody know in this house. When you decide that you're going to renew your strength and become all that God has called you to do and you step out on top of the mountain and be with God, I want to let you know you're coming down a victorious warrior, a mighty powerful person and it goes and begins to hit the beak and it hits the beak. How many of you know that that's not an easy project? It's not even a nice one. It's not even likable or lovable. It's a very difficult situation. But it goes and hits the beak and hits it and hits it until the beak falls off. When it falls off, it sits and waits for it to grow. When it grows, it goes on to the next thing. The next thing is the clothes. It begins to remove the clothes. It's removing the clothes itself. It removes the clothes. It tears them out. It tears them apart. They come off. It's not an easy agenda. It's not an easy situation. But let me tell you, easy street closed a long time ago. If you want to go places with God, you got to step out and do things that God has called you to do. And I declare in the name of Jesus, fear shall not overcome you. You shall do what God called you to do. Somebody lift up your voice. It lifts it up until it, 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 it removes the clothes. And then it sits and waits for the clothes to grow. The minute they grow. And I believe as it's doing that, the other birds are flying around it and thinking it's over. You see, people have a way of judging the ones that are waiting. What you don't understand is that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes when you're renewing your strength, you look stupid. You look like you don't know what you're doing. But I came for those who are renewing their strength right now. And the birds are flying around you and laughing and mocking at you. I want to let them know you are growing. The clothes are growing. The beak is growing. Oh, keep watching this space and listen carefully. And then the, it's not enough. It has now grown a new beak. It has also grown new clothes. Now it's time for the real job. It begins to pluck the feathers off. It begins to pull out the feathers. I want to let you know it's not an easy thing because they are already stuck on the chest. It begins to pull them out. It begins to throw them. It begins to work on them. And it pulls them one after the other until they are out. And then it waits again and they begin to grow. The new feathers begin to grow. I don't know who I came for today, but I came to let you know if you want change, you've got to take the very serious root of a with God. I want, to, I, I want you to understand when you're renewing your strength you cannot accommodate the old nature. You've got to let the old nature die so that the new person begins to rise up and become everything that you were created to become. When Abraham got to a point in the mountain, he realized he could not go further with the people that were coming with him. And he said, wait here. I will come back. I'm going with the sun. There are people that cannot go to your next level. Hey! There are people that cannot accommodate you to your next level. There are people that cannot understand what you're doing with God. They cannot understand your next assignment. You have to say bye-bye as you walk with God. And the Bible says Abraham reached the top. As he reached the top, he found his miracle. I want to let you know, if he went with people, they would have told him not to do what he's planning to do. I want to let you know that sometimes, like the eagle, you got to step aside and let God work on you. Let him remove the feathers. The feathers could be a low self-esteem. Oh, the beak could be a habit that you have that needs to die. And let me tell you, sometimes when you get to that point of wanting more of God and you're saying the old must die and to kill that sin is not an easy thing. But the sin that so easily besets you is the sin that's keeping you from advancing in God. And you got to rise up and say, sin, I'm going to deal with you from today. In the mighty the name of Jesus. Whatever you need to deal with, it cannot be accommodated in the next level. Sometimes it's a defeatist mentality. Everything about you is a defeatist mentality. 
When you hear, oh, it's our year of fruitfulness, you're already thinking, all right. You need to go to that mountain and kill that defeat. In the name of Jesus, can I hear somebody say hallelujah? Lift up your voice and say a better hallelujah. Deal with those limiting beliefs. Deal with unbelief in your life. You must separate yourself to deal with those things. And you know what? You cannot go with a crowd. You cannot go with a crew. Maybe there comes a time when it's you and God to deal with a certain issue. And so the eagle must go and begin to pluck everything out and deal with issue. Now this change occurs when you are alone with God. The eagle does not get accompanied by other eagles. It has to take a, a decision by itself. You have to take time to hear God. I want you to know prayer is not easy. Waiting on God is never easy. Sometimes he will not talk. Sometimes he will not talk and you don't want to force uh, issues. So you're waiting on God. It's not easy. But I want you to know that when you're renewing your strength and coming out of those things that have held you back and held you captive, it's never easy. Look at three people. Tell them, deal with sin. That one you don't talk nicely and politely. Say, deal with sin. Say, deal with the things that are dealing with you. Uh -huh. What about emotional and intelligence? You need to go to the peak of the mountain. Actually, you need to go to the highest peak and be all by yourself and deal with emotional and intelligence because there are people who are just not emotionally intelligent. They will open their mouth and you want to collapse and die oh, because you cannot believe they said that. You are like, huh, why? Because they have no emotional intelligence, even in dealing with their marriages. That you can stand and talk to your husband anyhow. You need to go to the peak of the mountain. You just need to be in a special corner so that you scare buried you and you remove that beak. Removing the beak of talking nonsense. That you can open your mouth and tell your husband anything that comes your way. And then you're here. Ereka shahaya ma God. Come quickly. Even though, even so, come Lord Jesus. He's not coming. Let me just tell you now. He's not coming. Because you have to deal with it. You must go and find what is it that you need to change that will help you to fly in life? What is it that you need to overcome that will help you to become? What is it that you need to deal with? Because there are things that we are waiting on God for, but he's waiting on us. Because there are things he will not deal with on our behalf. He wants us to deal with them. On our, God is not going to show you how to talk to your husband. He's going to expect you to find it and work it. He's going to expect you, you, you cannot be mistreating your wife. Can I talk? Treating her like trash and then saying I'm the head. Don't you know I'm the head? If you're already trying to confirm it, you see you don't know. Because you cannot try to confirm what you already know you are. You can't be stamping your like this, telling the children, I'm the head of this home. Telling the wife, I'm the head of this home. Hey, now if you don't know, how will I know for you? <laughs> My friend, you're in trouble. Tell them, go to the peak. To the, you need the highest peak to go and remove that everything. You need to remove all those feathers. Somebody say amen. And so, you must understand what it is that holds you back. And go and renew it so that you can be able to become everything that God created you to become. And the Bible says, number three, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. Now, when the eagle is ready, when the feathers have grown, when the beak has grown, when the claws have grown, the eagle is ready. And what does it do? It stretches forth its wings. It just expands them like this. And I wanted to let you know that it begins to sow. Because why? It has a new rebirth. I declare in the name of Jesus a rebirth of people in the house of God. Rebirth of mindsets. Rebirth of financial abundance. Rebirth of a wonderful marriage. I declare rebirth over your life in the name of Jesus and can I hear better amen in the house. When it rains every other bird goes to look for shelter. Not the eagle. What does the eagle do? It goes and, 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 and spreads its wings above the rain. What does it do? It goes into the skies and releases the wings like this. And begin, look at it. Whoever put this here, I'm buying you a cold Fanta and half bread. 
And the bread must be white. Hey, you see a brown. White bread with Fanta. May you tell it who is boss. Deal with it. Eh? You're drinking cold Fanta like this. You hear God. That's how you hear messages like this. Messages like this don't just come. You must take that cold Fanta. Look at this. Look at this. And, 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 and it looks, listen, while they are running away, while they are running away all the other birds from the rain, the, the eagle is looking for it. Why? Because it has renewed strength. I declare in the name of Jesus, whatever you are running away from before, with your renewed strength from today, you are rising above it in the name, above every other name. I declare you shall rise above your trouble. You shall rise above your mockers. You shall rise above what the devil has thrown over you. You shall rise above every situation. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are rising above every cloud. You are rising above every calamity. You are rising above every pain. You are rising above every disease. I declare that to be so. It rises above. And guess what? It takes advantage of the wind. I'm about to preach. I feel like preaching. It takes advantage of the pain. It takes advantage of the wind. It goes above the wind. While everybody else is crying, it uses the wind to lift it up. Let me declare over somebody, your trouble will be an opportunity for your next level. Your trouble will be an opportunity for where God is taking you. Your trouble will cause you to rise above in the name of Jesus. And let me tell somebody, when you're up above, guess what? The problems look tiny because you're looking at them from God's perspective. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will not be down here like chicken crying over trouble. You will rise up like the eagle and begin to see like God sees. Your trouble will look like God's trouble in the name of Jesus because when you rise you use the Holy Spirit to carry you through the trouble ah, instead of crying you will be laughing you will be having a Holy Ghost moment instead of feeling bad you will be telling God I'm here with you I will soar like an eagle I will be all God called me to be I will become in the name of Jesus why? because he that began a good work in you. I declare he is faithful to complete it. What is common to other people will not be common to you because your trouble will no longer just be commonized. They tell us, commonize your trouble. Oh no, we are not commonizing them. We are rising above them. We are rising above them and we are beginning to look Ah, the way God sees, we are going to see with the eagle's eye, 2020 vision. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will see the way God sees. You will do things the way God does them. You will not be intimidated by situations. You will be the one intimidating the situations. It looks for wind. It flaps its wings and it begins to soar. It stretches its wings and it begins to soar above trouble. So I declare in this house, whoever is in trouble, you are rising above by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are rising above that trouble. I don't care what trouble it is. I declare you're rising above it. I declare so in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and say, yeah, yeah. Lift it up and say, yeah, yeah. The soaring ego relaxes. It uses the elements to be able to relax in them. You will use your trouble to relax. And the Holy Ghost will carry you through. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, yeah. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. In this era, we are not using strength. My friend, we are using Holy Ghost. Hey, Rakata Namaza. I feel like preaching in this house. In this era, in this situation, we are not using power. We don't even have that might. We are using Holy Ghost. We are going to see trouble like this. We are going to spread our wings. Let me see the warriors spreading their wings. Oh my God, let me see warriors spreading their wings. Just spread it out. And say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, 
take over Holy Ghost. I am sowing with you in this trouble. I know that who will begin a good work in me, you are faithful to complete it. I will no longer have a sleepless night. I will not fight the battle you are already fighting. I will rise up and sow like the eagle. And God, you will renew my strength to begin to sow in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, take your seats. And I want you to understand. Listen, as long as you think you can do it, God will let you try. As long as you think it's, it's okay, it's possible for you, God will let you try. But when you surrender, his strength is going to be made perfect in your weakness. God does not use strong people. Because where will his strength be seen? Some are too strong for God. He is waiting for you to admit your weakness. So that he can be able to carry you through your weakness and show you his strength. Am I talking to somebody? When the eagle is up there, it is showing its weakness. I am weak. I don't have a beak anymore. I am weak. I don't have clothes anymore. I am weak. I don't have feathers anymore. And God tells it, come, let me show you how we're going to do it. The dealings of God are not easy. But I want to let you know the, 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 the blessing thereafter. The joy set before some people. Some of you have been crying and wailing and wondering. But the joy set before you. I can already see it. You're going to rise up and become everything that God created you to become. People will be saying that is too much speed. It's because they don't know where you've been. They don't know how long it has taken you to deal with the big... Ah, they don't know how long it has taken you to deal with the feathers. They don't know how long it has taken you to deal with their clothes. That's why they say that is too fast. But they don't know the story behind the scene. But I'm watching at people who have been behind the scenes. Oh, to let you know you're coming out. And you're coming out victorious. Somebody say, yeah, yeah. Lift up your voice and say, I better hallelujah. From God's perspective, challenges take a different position. Stop looking at them as mountains. When you look at the eagle, it doesn't deal with everything at once. Some of you need to separate your issues. You deal with one at a time. Some of you, you are too, you are too in, it, it, it looks so, too insurmountable because you have put everything together. You need to remove and begin to deal with the beak alone. It deals with the beak. When the beak grows, it deals with the claws. When the claws grow, it deals with the feathers. Don't deal with all of them together. You will tear yourself apart. Deal with one thing at a time. Overcome one challenge at a time. Don't try to think that you, 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 you can do everything all at once. Separate them. You will see they'll become minute. Because you're looking at them through God's perspective. Look at your neighbor. Tell them it's easy with God. Oh, I can't hear you say it's easy with God. Viewing challenges from God's perspective makes you overcome because it's easy with God. Uh -huh. And then the Bible says, they shall run and not grow. I haven't preached. I haven't. I promise. The word I have, guy, Mwadani, you guys, <laughs> Woo! you need to get ready. I have not preached. I have not preached. Because God is about to introduce to us who he is. <laughs> they shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. The key and condition to this is waiting. The reason why you will not grow weary, the reason why you will walk and not faint is one, waiting. When you learn to wait, this scripture will stand strong in your life. Why? Because you have learned to wait. And so we go now to verse 28, where I told you we are going this way. And so we go now to verse 20, that was 29. We go now to verse 28, and we see something, because 29 talks about uh, uh, the, the, even the young, you know, even the young shall run, uh, uh, but now we go to verse 28, and now this is where I begin my message, because uh, Pastor Mwaneki said when you were preaching, I was like, I didn't even want to tell Pastor Carol, look at him again, but you were preaching, you are saying what I am coming to say. And so I be, you are in the spirit. Amen. And so watch this now. In verse 28, we see that there is a question with an answer. L l have, you, have, you, have you not known? Have you not heard? And then God begins to say, he is the everlasting God. So we see a question and we see an answer. And so we go back to what the question was. Because he is saying, have you not heard? 
Have you not seen? What was the question? Go with me to verse 14 and let's read it together. Re let's read it together. Verse 14. Two, three, go. Uh -huh. With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him? And taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? And showed him the way of understanding? <laughs> According to the Babylonian myth, the god Madak received advice from Ea, the god of wisdom. And so, the gods were receiving wisdom from other gods who seemed to be the ones with the wisdom they needed. And so, they were thinking that it is one of those gods that created the world, the god Madok. They thought that he was the one who created the world, but he received the wisdom from the god Ears. Israel was trying the impossible. They were trying to find where God originated from. They were trying to find the source of God. They were trying to find the root of God. Because those gods of Baal had roots. They had where they came from. And so they now are trying to find Yahweh. Where did you come from? Who are you? And they were trying to equate Yahweh with all these idol gods I'm about to preach. Nowhere in the Bible have we ever seen that possibility. I want you to hold your mind and say my oblongata mendula is too small to fully understand God and try to wonder about his source. Tell your neighbor you have not studied enough, neither will you ever, to be able to understand the full mind of God. You can read the Bible, tell them. And you can understand some things. But to think that you can know God in his entirety, tell them you have another thing coming. And so God steps in and he begins to answer. Are you ready for the answer? God steps in and he begins to answer. The first thing he asks is, have you not known? Have you not heard? And he says the everlasting God. That means that the God of all ages. He is the God of the long view. I'm the understanding God. I, 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 I don't have a beginning. Neither do I have an ending. If you try to catch me Israel. You will never be able to catch me and box me. I am who I am. That is why he could not give Moses a name. Because you had to put in whatever you need at that time he says I am who I am I am the everlasting God and so he began to explain to them I am timeless in nature I, uh, I transcend every limitation of time and space I give the time but I'm out of the time if I say it's a time for my children I step into that time and I show myself strong on their behalf nothing can take a day extra nothing is gonna take a minute more than God purposed I want to let you know he is the everlasting God age to age he's still the same he doesn't change his name is El Shaddai he was saying he's not bound by the constraints of human beings you cannot bind God in your little mind and think that you know him is in his entirety he was telling Israel Get a grip, get it together. I am not Paul, neither will I ever be. I am the ever I am the everlasting God and I came to tell the church today your God is infinite your God is sovereign your God is all powerful your God is all knowing your God is too unlimited your God is too big your God is the source of comfort your God is the source of your assurance your assurance doesn't come from your job. Oh no, even if you added your salary, even if you become the owner of the company, your source will never be that. Your source will always be the everlasting God. I don't know who I came to preach to, but I want to let you know, you can never box God. His strategies, his, moment, his life is about moment by moment and then age by age. I want to let you know you're not too old for God. 
Some of you are saying you have taken too long for God to come through for you. I declare in the name of Jesus, your time is right because he is the everlasting God, the God of Israel. I want you to understand, Israel was demanding immediate satisfaction. But God was saying, I'm not the God of the immediate. I'm the everlasting God. I have the long view. I have the overview of everything that you're going through. Everything that you're going through, nothing will sabotage you because I have seen your end. Before you began, I already saw your end. Before you got anywhere, I already saw where you're going. And I have made every crooked path straight. I have already made every crooked path straight. I have already organized every witch. They are going to know who God is. I want you to know, the bigger the devil, the more powerful God is going to come through for you. He was telling Israel, ah, listen to me. I am a God of the long haul. I can see everything before it, when it begins. You see what you have just thought about? I have seen it. He knows what you're thinking. That is why when they tried to think about the woman that was pouring oil on Jesus' feet, they didn't have to talk. Jesus already saw what they were thinking and said, I can see. I want to let you know even what you just thought right now. And the second thing he told them, I am the creator of the universe. Remember they thought that Madoc created the universe. And he was like, I am the creator of the entire earth. Can I talk to you about your God? He told them, I consult nobody. Yeah. If you don't shout now, I don't know how you will shout. I consult nobody. I consult nobody. I don't need advice. Neither do I need any blueprint. Have I said it? Will I not do it? Have I spoken it? Will I not make it good? What I say is what I do. I'm the creator of the entire earth. I don't need no advice, neither do I need any blueprint. My wisdom is enough, my skill is sufficient. I am God all by myself. Even the breath you have comes from me. He was saying, I am the creator of the ends of the earth. I am the ultimate architect. Everything you see was created by me. There is no architect on earth that can beat my architecture. What am I saying? That your God is the architect of your very life. Everything about you is perfected in God. He was saying, not only am I the architect, I'm the sustainer of the cosmos. I am the sustainer of the cosmos. I am responsible for bringing out chaos. Ah, I am responsible for bringing out chaos and restoring order. I declare your life will be restored by order. Chaos shall not be your portion. In the name of Jesus, I am intricate in everything that I do. That is why when you look at yourself, everything I created is meticulously done because I am the God of details. Hey! Somebody shout yay! Hey! Somebody shout yay! Hey! Somebody shout yay! Hey! His majesty and his greatness causes us to walk in awe. It causes us to walk in reverence. His majesty and his greatness is pronounced by everything. When you look at the mountains, they pronounce God. When you look at the rivers, they speak of the creator. When you look at the animals, they speak of the creator. When you look at yourself, you speak of the creator. He was saying, I am the creator. And what was he saying? I give life and I sustain it. Jesus 
help me preach. He was saying, not only do I give life, I sustain it as well. Who is it that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord has not commanded it, I declare in the name of Jesus, you will live and not die. Everything in the universe uh, dictates uh, that he is God. He is the creator. And he went to number three. Look, lift up your voice and say, my God, does not no distance. My God is not limited. Uh, what he was telling Israel, I'm not a Palestinian God. He was telling them, I'm not a Babylonian God. I'm not limited to a space. I am everywhere. Every time, doing what I purpose to do, because I am God. Then he said to them, I neither faint. I neither faint, nor grow weary. God moves through centuries and millennia, accomplishing his strategies according to his works. And he never faints. I want to let you know, don't equate your God with your trouble. Israel, hear me today. Stop equating your God with your trouble. I want you to know that your God never grows weary. You can get tired, but God never gets tired. If he says it's short time, I feel like running over a troop. I feel like jumping on a mountain. I feel like shouting. I want you to know, when God says it is so, he never gets tired, he never gets weary. Our God is present today, he is present tomorrow, he is present the day after, he will be present yesterday, he is present all through, because our God is an inexhaustible God. I want you to tell somebody around you, he is not like you. You get tired. He's not like you. You get weary. He's not like you. You give up. He's not like you. Our God is timeless. Our God is inexhaustible. Ah, and number four, he said, uh, my understanding. I don't know who has lost their job. I don't know whose marriage is in trouble. I don't know who is crying out to God right now. I don't know who is weary. I don't know, but I came to tell you, throw your weariness at God. Tell him, God, I hand over my weariness because he doesn't get weary. Neither does he get tired. I command you right now to get the wisdom of God on your head. I command you to get the wisdom of God for your next dimension. And he said, the last thing he said, he said his understanding is unsearchable. In other words, not only can we not know the whole mind of God and the source of God, but we actually must understand that God is the source of our power. He is the source of our energy. He is the source of our strength. He is the source of our endurance. So tell your neighbor, it's not the gym that you go and lift weights. It is God that gives you power to be able to endure anything in life. And what was he saying? He was saying God's knowledge and insight are beyond human capacity. In other words, you cannot try to box me. I am insatiable. I am too big for your mind. Your mind is too little. In fact, your education is too small. Your intellect is too tiny. The most amazing man that has wowed every man is foolish before God. It cannot compare to the foolishness of God with the wisest man on earth. That is what the Bible says. So the men that are making you go, wow, now wow. Before God, it is nothing. I want you to understand that what God is telling us, his understanding surpasses human capacity. It surpasses human reasoning. Your intellect is too small, Jeremy. You can never study enough to put God and say you can now do. Ha, ah, they tried. And they said this boat, the way we built it, not even God can sink it. 
is insatiable. My God, let me tell you, you cannot put your human capacity to, be, to try and fight with God. You're too limited. You're too small for God. You need to understand he loves you and includes you because he wants to, not because he has to. So we are not singing because he's in need of us. Get it right. God can get stones. Stones. One day his servant is not hearing what he's saying. And he begins to speak to the donkey. And he begins to show the donkey what he's saying. The servant later catches it. The donkey got it before the servant. I want to let you know ah, ah, your intellect. Hey, God is insatiable, my friend. Don't try to box him. He is aware of our circumstances. He is aware. Number two, I want you to write this down very quickly. He has the authority and means to lift us up. He has the authority and means to lift us up. Hey, why? Because he's aware of our circumstances. And we have meaning because of the fact that God's spirit chose to include us. That's the reason we have meaning. Because he chose to include us. And he chose to give us his word. So that we can get to know a glimpse of him. And so he was telling Israel, have you not known? Have you not heard? I am not by. And that is why somebody like Elijah got it very well. And he rose up and he lifted up his voice and said, If Baal be Baal, bow to him. If God be God, bow to him. But we are not going to falter between two opinions. Ladies and gentlemen, what he was telling Israel is don't try to falter between two opinions. Don't get it twisted. I am not a, a, a stone made God. I'm not a wooden God. I'm not an idol that you can imagine to be worshipping. I'm not a calf. Whether you've made me of gold or, or, or diamonds, that's not who I am. He was ex excuse me, explaining to them exactly who he is. And I want you to look at somebody and just tell them, have you not heard? Have you not known? The everlasting God. Actually, let us put it on the screen and read it together. And then I finish. Oh my God. Are you getting the word? <laughs> I, <laughs> let me tell you, I woke up at night. I started writing at 3 a.m. I was just hearing God and writing at 3 a.m. I was doing business with God. So I knew today is your day. Let me tell you, let me tell you, we are going to call on this God. After this, we are calling on this God. The one that answers by fire. Let him be God. Are we together? So watch this now. I want us to read it together. Uh -huh. Actually, let's do this. Let me write something. Let me, let me give you this to write it down. So that you can uh, uh, rise up. We read it together. Then we do business. Are you ready for business? This is a house of restoration and prayer. We're going to call on God. Let me tell you, we are going to call on God. And we're going to see him manifest over our lives. Now, if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling weary, if you're feeling beaten down, if you're in a place, because when I was preparing, I could see in the spirit that there are many who are feeling weary. They are tired because you've waited, you've been praying, you've been crying out. And God sent me to you that I tell you to wait. And don't wait aimlessly. Wait hopefully. When you wait hopefully, then you know that you're expectant that something beautiful is coming. So wait, wait on the Lord. He is the one who promises to renew your strength. Nobody can renew your strength but God as you let him. And so wait on him and let him renew your strength. You need to be a people that are hopeful. You know, they say in psychology that if you want to come out of depression, you must hope for something. When you hope for something, hopeful people always win in life. Because you're always hoping that something beautiful is coming out of this. I'm going to see a better tomorrow. Everything is going to be alright. Can you imagine what the disciples, the, some like Paul, were doing in jail? Can you imagine Joseph in jail? Going through hell and high waters. He was hopeful that what he saw in a dream was going to come to pass. And so you must wait in hope. Somebody say amen. amen. Rest in the faith of knowing that God will raise you up. Rest in that faith. 
of knowing that God will raise you up. And the last thing I want to say is rely on God. The way the eagle relies on the wind. We have the wind of the Holy Spirit. Rely on God. Rely on the Holy Spirit. You shall not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. You shall run. You will not be weary. Why? Because you're relying on the Holy Spirit. Stop relying on your strength. Stop relying on people and getting angry at them. They also don't have an answer the same way you don't have. Don't rely on people and then get mad at them because they are not answering you. They are not your answer. God is your answer. But when you rely on God and you're hopeful that he's going to do it, he's going to do it. He's going to change that marriage. He's going to change that uh, financial status. He's going to change your mindset. He's going to change you, but you have to rely on him. And when I talk, I talk about relying, remember the eagle releases. It releases its wings. It doesn't flap. When you release your wings, it means that you're now being carried. This is what it means. If you're going to rely on the Holy Spirit, allow him to take preeminence of what you're not understanding. Let him take charge of what you're not getting. Let him take control and everything is going to be okay. Are we together? Put your hands together for the King of Kings. Then stand up on your feet. And if you feel led that you want to come and put an offering at the altar, you can go ahead and do that even as we pray. You can go ahead and do that. If you feel led that you want to come and put a seed at the altar, you go ahead and come and do that in the name of Jesus. So hear me. I want us to read this together. And after we finish, I want us to hold hands with our neighbors. And we're going to pray. We're going to trust in God. That all these things he has said he is, we will see the manifestation of that in our lives quickly in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Okay, clear your throat. <clears throat> I want you to read it with gusto and power. Two, three, go. Have you not heard? Uh, sorry, sorry, let's start it again with music. Loud music, loud. Plus drums. Twendekazi. Read it aloud. Two, three, go. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God. The Lord. The creator of the ends of the earth. Neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is insatiable. Give him a praise. Hey. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we are going to start like this. We are going to start like this. We are going to start like this. We are going to hold hands. We're going to pray in this two by two. Two by two. I want you to face each other. This is not uh, the, the, the prayer that is just wasting time. It's the one you're looking at each other. Jadiel, you can go, go hold mercy. Uh, 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 Devi, hold Jadiel's wife. Uh, Kujani hapa katikati hawa. Uh, Jeremy, she can. Uh, yes. Florence, you can hold this young man here. Yes. Watch a monikia jitafti mtu. I want us to pray. This one, I don't want a nice prayer. Okay, hold on. How many of you now here are waiting on God seriously? Why do you think God gives such word and wakes me in the middle of the night? In the middle of the night, he woke me up. I was telling dad, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, baby. I, and I went to the office and I started because he woke me up in the middle of the night. Why? Because of you. It's because of you. Because he could see you're waiting. He wanted your waiting to be directed so that you're waiting the right way. You're not waiting in anger. You're not waiting in impatience. You're not waiting in, you're, you're, you're upset with God because you think he owes you something. God never owes us anything. It is a privilege and an honor to even be able to wait. Are we together? So I want us to pray. And I want us to pray. We are praying for our neighbor. And what we are praying for is a God, whatever they are waiting on you for, do it for them in the name of Jesus. Begin to call on the month that you want them, do you want it to come to pass? Open your mouth and begin to pray. Pray. Then after that, we are going to dance. We are going to dance to Kadosh and all those. We are going to celebrate. Open your mouth. Begin to pray. One, two, three. Pray. Rattle in tongues in this house. Le 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 ba si ya mahai. Iranda ba 
Katala Kandabasa, Erande Bosa Ketelika Yamande Basila, Ekale Bosia Mahai, Robosa Candele Basa, Orande Basa Keteleka Nira Basia, Mandala Basanda Shele, Makale Bosaya Mande, Jokoro Bosa Keteleka Yama, Erande La Candele Bosa, Makare Bosa Keteleka Yamande, Ekarabasata La Kaya Mandeba. Open your mouth and pray. Pray like a warrior. Declare the waiting is over. Declare this is the season for visitation. Declare in the name of Jesus. Your neighbor will not wait anymore. That God is coming through speedily. Open your mouth and declare. Their season is here. Their time has come. Open your mouth and declare. Their hour is here. Open your mouth and declare. God has remembered them. Open your eyes and her mouth and declare. This is their time. Erekete masa. Erande baseka. Rabo seka mande. Eranda seleka. Orande basi yama. Eranda basakata. Eranda baseleka. Orande seleka. Erande basi yama. Erekete leka. Mande lelele bosa. Oranda baseke. Makariata. Erande base. Mande lelele bo. Makariata. Eranda ba. Orande bo. Ekanama. Shekele ba. Irande basa. Ekariate. Mande le basia. Oshalele ba. Oranda basela. Makare bosa. Irande basela ka. Ikanama seke. Orande basia ba. Oshalele le le le. Mande le 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 le. Mande le 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 bo. Mande le 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 bo. Ekare bosela. Irande basaya. My life will never be the same. I refuse. I refuse to be lied to. I refuse deception. In the name of Jesus, my life will be focused on the great I am, the mighty one, the warrior, the one that takes care of everything, the unsearchable God, the creator of the universe, the one who is immutable, the magnificent God. My eyes are focused on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. My eyes are focused on the great I am, on the mighty Redeemer. My eyes are focused on the King of Kings. My eyes are focused on the mighty God. The one who makes no mistakes, the one who knows the end from the beginning, the God that never fails, the majestic King, the Holy One of Israel, Open your mouth and declare. Reba sata la base. Herande le basanda. E karabasa kata. Herande basi yama. Herande basa kate le ba. Release that hand. Begin to pray for yourself. Open your mouth and declare for yourself. It's your season. Rende le 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 ba. Rende le 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 ba. Rende le 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 ba. Pray for yourself now. Open your mouth and declare for yourself now. Robo seka masa. Herande basekete. Maria kana masa ya. Horande lelelaka. Ekare basela. Irande basa ya ma. Mande lelelelelelebo. Ekelelelelelelebo. Pray, 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 pray. Horanda basaya makande ba, eranda basakete le kaya ma, eranda basakata ya, eranda basakete le kai. Maria kana basaya ma, eranda basai makande. Horata na basakete la, eranda le le basia, makara basata na ma. You are Yahweh, you are God, you reign in majesty, you are exalted above the heavens. You alone are worthy of adoration. 
You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of power. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy of praise. Open your mouth and declare it. In the Katanamasa, Waranda Basakata, wonderful, mighty God, everlasting Father. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You know no limits. You cannot be bossed. You cannot be limited. You are God all by yourself. My situation does not equate to who you are. You are God. You reign. Oranda Basakata. You reign forever. You are greater than the greatest. You are higher than the highest. You are better than the best. You are God all by yourself. You reign in majesty. You are exalted high above the heavens. There is no one that compares with him. You are incomparable. You reign forever. Be lifted up, oh God. Be exalted above. Oh, Ratana Masanda. Three more minutes. Open your mouth. Erande Basekete. Mare Basiyama. Ekara Basandeba. Ekare Basekema. Three more minutes. Kare Keta. Eranda Basa. Makata Namaza. Erakana Masaka. Erande Baseketa. Erande Basayama. Ekarabasatanama, Ekarabas and Nanabasa, Ekarabasatanamasa, Ekarabas and Nanabase, Ekarabasatanamasa, Ekarabasia Makana, Ekarabasa Katalaka, Ekarabas and Nanabasa, Ekarabasa Talakayama, Ekarabas and Nelebasa, Ekarabasa, Ekarabas and Nelebasa. Oh, have you not said it? Will you not do it? You are God all by yourself. You reign. You are God. There is no one like you. What you say you will do is what you do. You reign forever. God, we believe you. We stand on your word. The integrity of your character. You are God. We love you, Lord. We acknowledge your majesty. We acknowledge your lordship. Our oh, righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. We acknowledge you are the king of glory. Oh, Yahweh, you never fail. The same God yesterday, today, and forever. The insatiable God, the creator of the ends of the earth. What a wonder you are. You never grow tired. You never grow weary. You never get tired of hearing us. You never get tired and fed up of us. You love us still. No matter how many times we call you, you love us. You are an amazing God. You are God all by yourself. You are great and greatly to be praised. You reign in majesty. You are high and lifted up. You are exalted above the heavens. Master, there is no one that compares with you. You stand muchness in your world, oh God. You are beautiful beyond description. You are too marvelous for words. You're like nothing ever seen or even heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are wonderful, Jehovah. There is no one like you. You reign in majesty. You are God. You reign forever. You are exalted above. There is no one like you. Receive our adoration. Receive our worship. Receive our worship. In the Ketanamasa. Herandi Basekata. Herande Basayaba. Oranta la Basia. Herande Basekela. Oranka de Basela Kayama. Herande Basa. Karabase. Hilayama Deva. E Karabasatana. Herande Basiama. E Karabasakana. Herande Basakatai. Herande Basila Basa. Herande Basekete. Oh, one more minute. Oh, God. We trust you. We trust you, God. We will wait on you. In the Lord, I thirst for you. 
I long to be in your presence. My soul will wait on you. Father, draw me nearer, draw me nearer to the beauty of your holiness. Lord, I thirst for you. Lord, I thirst for you.
Jesus, my first love. Jesus, my first love. You're everything. You're everything I'm living for. Oh, the joy. You're the joy I know. Treasure I hold to. Treasure I hold to. I long for. I long for you. My eternal love. My eternal love. Your eyes and just fall in love. Jesus, my first love. You're everything I'm living You're for. Everything I'm living for. You're the joy I know. You're the joy I know. Treasure I hold. Treasure I hold deep. I long, I long for you. My eternal love. My eternal love. Yeah. 
joining with heaven's sound. With heaven singing hallelujah, you are holy. Each to each you're the same. There is no higher name, no higher Be enthroned on our praise. You faithful. We're going to read the declarations and then we sit and finish. Please put the declarations over there and we're going to read them now. Okay. Two, three, go. I decree and declare in this year of fruitfulness, I shall be fruitful in my spirit, my walk with God and my prayer life shall be on another level according to 2 Corinthians 3.18 Colossians 2.7 Ephesians 3.19 and Luke 18.1. I shall be fruitful in my mind. I will have creative ideas and productive thoughts according to Philippians 4.8. My mind shall be full of the world and shall produce witty inventions according to Exodus 35.31. My mind will give solutions to these generations according to Genesis 41, 34 to 36, and Daniel 5, 11 and 12. I shall be fruitful in my body. I am healthy and full of vitality, according to Romans 8, 11. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and therefore sicknesses and diseases and infirmity have no authority to attack it, according to Exodus 23, 25, 1 Corinthians 6, 19a, Jeremiah 33, 6. My body is not barren, but productive unto every good work, according to Ephesians 2.10 and Exodus 23.26. I shall be fruitful in my family. We will live a long, satisfied life, according to Psalm 91, 14 and 16 to 16, and Psalm 92, 12 to 14. My children and grandchildren are blessed, according to Psalm 112, verse 1 to 3, and Genesis 22.17. I shall be fruitful in my relationships. Only the right people will locate me according to Proverbs 27, 17 and Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10. My destiny helpers will locate me according to Esther 2, 9 and Mark 2, 3 to 5. I exempt myself from every wrong company according to 2 Thessalonians 3, 2 and Proverbs 13, 20. I am fruitful in my assignment. I have all the wisdom and knowledge I need to produce in my workplace, business, ministry, and my nation of calling, according to Daniel 1, 17 to 20, and Psalm 1 to 3. 
I decree and declare, in the year of fruitfulness, I shall be fruitful. Amen. I shall be fruitful. How many daughters of Zion do we have in the house? Do not, even if you're paid, you are paid to miss this Saturday. Don't miss. Even if you're paid. Pastor Carol, please come and do the graduation. Even if you're paid to miss this Saturday, do not miss. Please come and do the graduation as everybody else takes their place. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Uh, today is such an awesome day. We have the School of Catering graduating, so we'd like to call upon them. Uh, and even as they come in front, let's appreciate them. We have a powerful School of Catering uh, that, is, that has raised many people that are right now in the marketplace doing great wonders. And I shall also call upon their teacher, um, Teacher Agnes, Agnes George, that has been doing uh, an awesome job with them. And today, this class is very, very unique because we have uh, some of the heroes. The, the yes. We also have some of the heroes. I know you cannot even identify who they are. Amen? This is what happens when people come into contact with the Word of God because the Word of God works on you from inside out. Amen? And so I will request Miss Agnes to say some, Mrs. Agnes George to say something shortly and then invite the one who is supposed to say something. Praise the Lord, church. Amen. Yeah, this is the, gra uh, the school of catering. Uh, first is to appreciate all of you, our pastors, our elders, and all of you, the catering department, uh, led by Madam Lois for, for the moral support and for their participation. And more so to thank our bishop and our mom. They put this class in the spirit of uh, just teaching, training, equipping the body of believers with the word of faith that they may lead a victorious lives. So they've put various platforms, and this is one of them, where someone can come and get a skill in cookery. Uh, so this season is unique because we have the student that just come and enroll, but also Bishop has sponsored several of the guys who are in the Heroes program, the ones that are being rehabilitated, the ones that are being empowered and mentored. So it's our pleasure that we are able to graduate these uh, dear ones. And so I beseech you as a JCC family, if you know of someone who can uh, create an employment for them, some of them not just in cookery, like the Heroes, some of them are needful of jobs so that they can be able to transform their lives also. And with these skills, I know they, they are somewhere. They are not where they used to be. So you can be used of God even to empower someone and to extend grace. If you know of a person or a, on an opportunity that would benefit someone, maybe you can talk to the office. Or their team leader is Jeremy, Jeremy Christine. Uh, he, he, he is the, he's in the leading group uh, that works uh, with the heroes to just rehabilitate and change their lives among uh, you know, with uh, people like Drake Masinde, who, who, who they come, they, they have this program running on every Wednesday, where these guys, they are mentored, they are taught, they are taught the word, the ministers in the house, the pastors, they participate in all round or holistic salvation in their lives. So if you have something or some, some opportunity somewhere, you can just come and talk to the office so that they can be connected to the opportunity. And so we thank you all, some of our parents here, who have sent their, them to, to come and just learn, and we are grateful for that. So for the, the School of Catering runs from Tuesday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for two months. So we have, uh, uh, they do kitchen theory, and we do practicals that empower you, and with this certificate, someone can get an employee opportunity. So if you are there and also want to do something about your life, this is a year of fruitfulness. Just come and, and do something in this school. The next class is commencing 14th of April. So registration is ongoing. You just come and enroll from our care desk. And God will be praised. Bible says when men see these things, they give glory to God. So it is the, in mandate of Christ 
to raise others also. He's a lifter of men. He picks the lowly from the dust and the beggar even from the street and positions them to be prince among princes. So you can be used of God as a church family and do this and God will be glorified. Amen. Amen. So can we have maybe two people come and tell us what they learned or their experience in the school of catering? Yes, we have John Mwangi can speak on behalf of the, uh, the students that come and enroll and join. And then we have Peter, who will speak on behalf of the heroes. Amen. And we have Mercy, who will also represent the lady. <laughs> we are not gender biased. Amen. <laughs> Let's appreciate them even as they come. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> Praise God, church. My name is John Mwangi, also known as John Digital, and uh, I'm so happy today that uh, at least one of my passions has uh, come to the book. I want to thank you, teacher, for taking us through. I used just to think cooking is just about, you know, putting, you know, one spray and another together, but after I joined this class, I've learned quite a lot, and I think she forgot to mention the best part is that we, got, we get to eat what we prepare <laughs> so that we can know how it tastes. Uh, so I, I am so uh, grateful today and I would like to encourage anybody. For me, I was not looking for a job in the catering side. But I say this is like learning a new language. So John now, as you see him now, he knows how to speak English, Kikuyu, Kiswahili, and cooking. So, if you're coming to take this class for anything else, I mean, I know most of the people. So, our teacher also has been very, very gracious to give us a recipe book with over 100 recipes. So, leo mna upigiana simu unauliza, ni peji gani, ni peji gani. Thank you so much, and uh, I wish everybody would just enroll. It is the cheapest. I did my research before I joined this. And thank you even for the church for organizing such a powerful ministry through cooking. And now we can invite you and Akujana Mission Plus. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord Church. Um, my name is Mustin Dunge from Jubilee Christian Church, Thika Road. And um, I'm so uh, grateful for, for this opportunity. I'm so nervous. <laughs> but what an opportunity to learn and to upskill in this catering class. I've learned so much. You know, initially, I used to think that soup, nile enye ukipika nyama, yondo soup. But now I've, I've learned so much, so many different kinds of soups, so many different kinds of, of making different kinds of foods and even um, apart from even the cooking skills that we have gotten, even knowing God because our teacher is so spiritual and every day before the class we begin with prayer and even the teamwork and the togetherness she builds in these classes is so commendable and I really appreciate her and I thank God for the opportunity. Praise God, church. Praise God again, church. I look at your neighbor on the right and on the left. Tell them, I look better than you today. <laughs> okay, my name is Apita Mburu, and my story is a bit different uh, because I came from the streets. Uh, I'm now... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm in Heroes for Christ program. And I used to, uh, to sleep uh, under the bridge, Pale Mudurua, for three years, uh, from 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Uh, but when I joined this church, I remember well that day, I came and sat uh, just uh, behind the media. And I remember when I came to this church, I looked like a suspect. Yeah? <laughs> but God is continuing to do wonderful things in my life. And I'm very grateful for this, yeah? So first, I'll uh, thank you, thank you. 
Sana sana. Sana sana. First, I'll thank our bishop, our mom, and our teachers, our great leader, Jeremy, you know, for impacting us with skills that are going to change our lives. And I'm very sure that the marketplace is not yet ready uh, for what God is ready to do in our lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Hey. Amen. Amen. I tell you, if you stand here and look at them, you cannot tell who is in the heroes program. Amen. Because we can see change. Can you imagine your kizunguyote in the bridge? Amen. Yeah? And we believe that God is going to do great things in your life as you step out of this place. You're stepping out with greatness in the marketplace to not just go and make money, but also to impact the world out there. Amen. To bring a change in this industry. Amen. And so even as you are graduating today, we decree and declare open doors. You shall not go around hunt, hunting for jobs. People shall look for you in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall go out there to do exploits and be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So today, we celebrate with you. And we pray that what you have learned, you shall impact other people. Amen. And for those of us parents that have had just people that have just finished high school, I have some of my students here. Amen. So let them not just stay at home. Bring them and let them get impacted in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's stretch forth our hands even as we pray for them. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful class, Almighty Father. Thank you for the fact that you have brought them, Jehovah God. And so today, as they stand on the altar to graduate, my Father, we decree and declare, oh God, a new day in their life has dawned, Jehovah Father. Those skills that they have gained from this cool King of Glory, they shall step out into the marketplace, my God, to impact and to change King of Glory. We decree and declare open doors, Jehovah Father. As they hold this certificate, my Father, we decree that the market shall be on demand for them, Jehovah God. We decree that none of them shall strive Frago King of Glory, that these same people, my Father, shall also sponsor others, Jehovah Father, because of the blessing of the Lord that rests upon them, Jehovah God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. And so we sh as we call their names, you shall clap for them and appreciate them. In Jesus' mighty name. Anne Modoni Maina, <laughs> Kaylin Stella, Brian Jiru, Masi Mwekali, Caroline Wanjiru Ndongo, okay, Sekui Maithia Mongela, amen, Austin Yeshia, let's appreciate him, Sonia Margaret Wangoi, John Mwangi, Agnes Mwasa, Grace Modoni, Celestine Has Rumana, Anne Wanjiko, Judy Paris Wamboy, Masin Dunge, Mark Kimani, Wanjiko Tom Wanyoike, Beatrice Kabita. Mary Wanjiko, Robert Mwangangi, Amos Wafula, Peter Mburu, Duncan Mwangi, Paul Were, Zachariah Akumu, Kelly Oro, Samson Gashie, Paris Masharia, Joseph Mwangi, Godwin David, James Musimi, Jonah Okusimba. Appreciate them in Jesus' mighty name. And so if you want to know more about the School of Catering, kindly visit the information desk in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let's, let me see how many are from Heroes. Just lift your hand wherever you are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Glory to God. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus. Amen. God bless you so much. You may go back to your seats. 
Hallelujah. Lives are being transformed. Amen. There is a sister who has been praying for a husband. Glory be to God. The husbands are manifesting. I look better than you look. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And we thank God. Amen. They are looking amazing. And they are looking amazing. And we really thank God. Come on, let's appreciate them one more time. Let's appreciate them one more time. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. So when we ask you for clothes and shoes, eh, you see the kind of work Jeremy together with the team they are doing. They are doing an amazing, amazing job. So if you can just support us. We have the second cohort now. Second cohort and uh, we are doing a wonderful job. Amen. Now, you could be here and you're not born again. You've not given your life to Jesus. You've not surrendered. You don't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior or, or, of your life. You don't know him as your personal Savior. I want to pray with you today. So wherever you are, I want you just to lift up your hand up there in the balcony down here. Amen. Just lift your hand wherever you are and we are going to pray with you today in Jesus' mighty name. Is there anybody like that? Before we close, amen. We don't want to uh, just leave without giving you the opportunity for you to come and receive eternal life to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you're there, just lift up your hand and we are going to pray with you. Is there anyone like that? Is there anyone like that? Glory to God. We have hands up there in the balcony. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Just lift up your hand wherever you are. We are going to pray with you today. It's your day of salvation. Thank you. Please help me with this gentleman here. Amen. Lift up your hand wherever you are. Ashes, kindly be on the lookout. Help me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Lift up your hand. Today is your day of salvation. Amen. You come and receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Lift up your hand wherever you were. Amen. Is there anyone else? Glory to God. They are coming. They are coming. We thank God for them. Amen. They are coming. They are coming to Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't you just make a prayer for them even as they come, as they make this decision, wherever they may be. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Down here, you're saying, Pastor, today I want to give my life to Jesus majestically rise up on your feet and walk forward today and say i've come to receive jesus as my lord and personal savior amen lift up your hand wherever you are are you there is there anyone else glory to god they are coming amen let's celebrate jesus for these souls that are coming to the lord hallelujah god bless you karibu karibu amen come 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 hallelujah amen 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We thank God. God bless you. God bless you. Is there anyone else? I don't want to shut you out. Is there anyone else who wants to come and join these four wonderful gentlemen who have come? Is there anyone else like that? You're saying, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior today. Don't live the same way you came. Is there anyone else? I'll wait for you if you're there. Is there anyone else? Wherever you are, just lift your hand and I'm going to pray with you. Is there anyone else? He says we just come as we are. Amen. We don't clean ourselves first. He does that. Amen. So we just come as we are. He does the rest. Is there anyone else like that? I don't want to leave you out. Amen. Glory to God. Let's celebrate these four souls that have come to the kingdom of God today. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the best decision you could ever make in your life. Amen. And uh, today you will receive Jesus and your life will be changed. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you see that one who was sleeping under the bridge under the, for three years? Amen. Look at him now. Amen. Now he can even introduce himself as a chef somewhere. Glory be to God. May God do the same for you in the name of Jesus. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord God, I come to you today believing in my heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead for my sake. From today, I confess, I declare, Jesus is Lord over my life. From today, I am a child of God. I am born again. Thank you, Father, for saving my soul. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these ones that you have drawn to yourself. And as you have brought them, may you keep them, may you watch over them, O God. May you cause your goodness to follow them all the days of their life. And we pray that you shall establish them in the faith. And may you reveal yourself to them as their personal God. May they know you intimately. May they know you personally in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we commend them into your hands. May you watch over them and may you keep them in Jesus' mighty name. And somebody said, Amen.
God bless you so much. Can you Raja go ahead and give them the books? Amen. Hallelujah. And then you're going to follow him. Amen. You're going to follow Karanja. He's going to take you to the back. Amen. Can you just walk for? Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you. Amen. Let's celebrate them as they walk out. Hallelujah. Amen. If this is your very first time to be in Jubilee Christian Church on a Sunday morning like today, we'd like to acknowledge you. We want to love on you and appreciate you and thank God so much that you took time to be with us today. So if you're a visitor, this is your very first time. We want to just kindly invite you to walk forward. Amen. Just rise up and walk forward. We are going to have, we have a gift for you. Amen. We want to just get to love on you. Hallelujah. If you are there and you are a visitor up there in the balcony, wherever you are in this place, I want to just encourage you to walk forward. And as you come, amen, as you come, glory be to God. Take you all your belongings, everything that you came with. Amen. Just walk forward. Hallelujah. And uh, we are going to just clap for you. These wonderful people are going to appreciate you even as you come. Hallelujah. Can you appreciate them as they're coming from all everywhere? from all over the place. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, let's appreciate them very well as they come. All our visitors, God bless you. Amen. Keep on coming. Keep on coming. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. And even as the others are coming, it's this way. My brother, come. Can the ushers help him? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you enjoyed the service? Did you enjoy the service? God bless you so much. Thank you so much for coming today. We don't take it for granted that you made JCC your house of worship this morning. Amen. And uh, if you have a church where you fellowship, kindly, even as the others are coming, God bless you. I'll just keep talking because of time. Amen. So if you have a church where you fellowship, please go back there. Say hello to your pastor. Tell them thank you so much that they allowed you to come and be with us today. But if you don't have a church, if you don't have a church, you don't have a man of God, that speaks over your life, you're most welcome to make JCC your church. Amen. And our dad and our mom, uh, together with the pastors, are well able to nourish you with the word of God until Christ is formed in you. Hallelujah. Now, there's a question we love to ask all our visitors. Amen. Church, do you want to help me? One, two, go. Where have you been all this time? Glory to God. It's been 25 years. Amen. But nevertheless, you found yourself, you found your way here. It's your first time and we love you. Glory be to God. Since we knew you were coming, we prepared a place specially for you. That's why that wonderful gentleman with a beard like mine, amen, is standing there to usher you to the back and uh, serve you some tea, some cake, and some nice things. We get to know you more. You sign our visitor's book. Will that be okay? Amen. Kindly just follow him. Amen. As these wonderful people clap for you. Come on, let's celebrate all these wonderful visitors. Celebrate them very well. Hallelujah. As you rise up, amen, as you wind up the service. Come on, celebrate them as they walk out. Celebrate them, celebrate them. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Why are you blessed today? Is it okay we put our hands together for our mom? Oh, come on, put your hands together. Let's celebrate the woman. If you're seated, kindly just, amen. We are winding up the service. I'm seeing some people are still seated. Amen. Can we put our hands together and celebrate the woman of God, our mom? What a powerful word. What a powerful word. What a powerful word we've received here today. Amen. And I know so many of us have received encouragement. We've received strength and our lives will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Now, if you are, are in line with the Daughters of Zion Convention, if you have not yet partnered and you would like to partner, uh, as everybody else will be walking out, I want you just to walk forward. Okay? So that we can be able to take your details. We can take your name. Amen. So if you'd like to partner with our mom towards the DOZ Convention, so I want you just to walk forward. And uh, secondly, tell your neighbor number two. Now, our mom is waiting for those who have come ready with your partnership. What you came to partner with, if you are ready with it, our mom is ready waiting for you in her office so that she can receive it and speak a blessing over your life. Glory be to God. So if you are ready uh, with your partnership, those who had already pledged and you came ready today with what, you, uh, what you'd like to give, uh, kindly just, uh, you'll just go to the reception and then you're going to be directed accordingly. Praise Jesus. Is that clear? Is that clear? Can you turn to your neighbor and ask them, Pastor Mesa Manini? Both points. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you've received it in the name of Jesus. As you're talking to them, can you just tell them one thing that you have learned? I tell you, if you say waiting, that will be it. Amen. Waiting is enough. Hallelujah. Waiting is enough. Glory to God. So many things to take away. 
Hallelujah. We are going to renew our strength as we wait. Hallelujah. Tell them, my neighbor, wait on God. Don't give up. Your season is turning around in the name of Jesus. Why don't you share with them the words of the grace. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Tell them, neighbor, surely goodness and mercy, signs, miracles, and wonders, and money shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Tell them. We are delighted that you chose to join us this morning from across the world. And what makes it the most special is having you on board. And on behalf of Bishop Alan and Reverend Kathy Kiuna, we are grateful and say a huge God bless you. You know we are in a season of fruitfulness and the word of God comes forth with grace to enable you bear fruit in your life. Being fruitful starts with you giving your life to Christ. And if you've done the same, please call the numbers on your screen. Somebody waits to pray with you. Also, if you'd like any material from our Get Understanding Bookshop, feel free to call the same numbers. We have this message available Available to you throughout the week on YouTube channel as well as other social media platforms. Get to like, share, and even subscribe. Have a blessed week. We believe to see you again, same place, same time next Sunday. I am Sylvia Bogo. God bless you.